Individuality and total separation of parts is the ultimate paradox. The greatest individual is God and thus represents the greatest possible form of freedom. Freedom absolute, since in this absolute estate, nothing else can give or take away this freedom. It is only when division occurs, to be away from individuation, that eventually the greatest form of enslavement can happen. The more divisions that occur in a system, the weaker that system becomes until it collapses. Die vision, which is to have two visions, is to legitimately and definitively see oneself in a paradoxical situation, where both good and evil are on equal terms, to know both good and evil as stated biblically. It is to be equally free and enslaved at exactly the same time. The best and the worst coexist in the same moment. It is the crux or crossing point towards the species moving further in one direction or its opposite. More freedom or more tyranny and oppression. Hence, if one has properly discerned the symbol, perfect vision is the ability to visualize both perspectives in an equal frame and thus make a choice. It is not an error to realize that those who are more individualistic gear themselves towards conditions of freedom, even at the risk of their own personal safety. It is the representation of strength, since there may be no one to rely on for support, guidance, or answers to life's problems and difficulties. The risk of this is great, but so are its advantages, since strength in the individual realm is not generated solely on the physical levels, but is also acquired in the mental, emotional, and spiritual levels through persistent and ongoing efforts. Work in this regard is therefore never seen as a burden, since the labor for freedom is its own reward. This is what has always been meant by there being no outside saviors. On the other side of the coin are those who wish to be collectivists, achieving security in herd-like mannerisms and methods of thinking and responding to life's challenges. This way of living caters to weakness and groupthink, which inevitably creates cowardice and an inward proclivity to despise any who truly think for themselves. This has been the reason that the individual whom questions this reality and seeks freedom is continuously called a conspiracy theorist. This label is used as a method to psychologically blacklist the individual from the group thinking herd. Individuality is given up for conformity and compliance, which are the pillars of all totalitarian regimes. The state seizes absolute authority to confer its so-called protections upon its enslaved populace who have stated that they are too weak to defend themselves against any and all threats. To the state and thus the herd, the individual represents danger and uncertainty and therefore must be eliminated from the equation of society. Taken symbolically, this is the legitimate basis for the 99% versus the 1%. Those who are the 1% have the strength of mind, character, and willpower to stay the course through all of the mental and emotional manipulation, proving every moment that they have the resilience and fortitude to stand alone. The 99% prove that they want to be saved, even if it means living in a state of tyranny and oppression. There are those who in this very tiny percentage have always been making Herculean efforts to enlighten the majority of their fellow species to a greater reality, only to be continuously met with ridicule, mockery, disdain, and even anger. Family, friends, neighbors, strangers, it has seemed vital and necessary to make these attempts continuously and repeatedly, even when in vain. Those who do this genuinely in the concern for the populace do so from the heart, which is all that matters, regardless of the results. The 99%, which are the symbol of 9-11 and the Phoenix, march toward their fate through the acceptance of the global inventory system of the beast, while the 1%, looking towards quite uncertain horizons, face a test of spirit unlike anything that can be imagined, in which no promises are made and the future is unwritten. Salvation is an individual responsibility, as it was meant to be. God is the ultimate individual, and thus to be in communion with God is to intuitively follow that path. Those who live in trepidation and fear of ultimates, let alone microscopic problems, are not in communication with God, 
and are incapable of listening. God is in the silence of solitude, not in the noise of the crowd. To be an individual in communion is to accept complete responsibility for one's choices and actions, while to divert responsibility and blame others is the mantra of the herd. It is once again no accident that the term lame is in blame. The rulers of the world have the populace locked into a permanent position of terror towards their own mortality, and this keeps their spirit in shackles. They cannot hear that if death is real, then life is unreal, and if life is real, then death is not. Attachments can blind one to the truth, which is potentially the greatest root of fear. Fear is the loss of attachments. The state primarily focuses on this when promising protection for one's family and loved ones against perceived external threats. This is not to mistake or invalidate the enormous potential value gained through experiences with those one cares about. That is not what is being said. It is to assert that those who wish to lord over others utilize tactics of manipulation over the thoughts and emotions that its populace has over those they are closest to. Attachment is fear. If everyone understood their relationship with God, no one would fear for anything. It is because one doesn't understand their relationship with themselves that they fear everything. When the indirect aspects of a choice are all taken away, it makes the choice futile. This is exactly what is happening with the lead-in to the inevitable mandate that any who do not receive the new crown virus vaccine will in essence not be allowed to participate as members of society. To take away the ability to go to work, get licenses, passports, permits, shop for groceries, access medical services, travel across borders, go to theaters, restaurants, sports events, own a business, etc., etc. To take all public access away from the individual for refusing to inject the worldwide mRNA inoculation is by default not a choice at all. It is tyranny disguised as benevolence based upon the false premise of ultimate safety. A wolf in sheep's clothing. Despite this fact, even many of those who recognize that this totalitarian health measure is completely wrong and goes against every natural principle of freedom and individuality will eventually succumb to its pressures because they will believe there is no other option because they will not be able to survive without the current system in place. To completely and utterly refuse to be compliant is to truly be left out in the cold. Since the beginning of this so-called pandemic, there have been many that have pointed to the term COVID as being an acronym for Certificate of Vaccine ID. Of course, as with everything that points to establishment objectives, this was rejected and called another crazy conspiracy theory. Yet, the months have rolled on and the validity of the acronym is proving to be quite accurate because there has for many years been a devilish objective to see everyone take a vaccine. There is a driven, punishing insistence on vaccinating the entire human populace. The question to ask is, why is there such an insistence, all under the guise of saving lives? If one thinks on it, there are many things that are taking far more lives every day. Starvation is one potent example. If one is to believe the UN statistics, around 25,000 people die from hunger every single day. And yet the governments and authoritarian establishment are never truly interested in injecting those lives with the food that they need to survive. That's 25,000 lives that could be saved every single day simply by inoculating them with the necessary nutrition. No major scientific discoveries or approvals need to take place to make this happen. Simply provide the food that is needed. This is also not just part of any pandemic. This has been going on every day for decades without any end in sight. Obviously, 25,000 lives a day is not enough for the authorities to sound the alarms. Perhaps it's because those lives count for nothing in the eyes of the governments and major corporations. Perhaps the cost of saving all of those lives is just a little too much. Let us also not forget how many lives get sent off to wars to die while supposedly fighting for freedom. A freedom which doesn't exist under the same regime that sent those same people to war, regardless of who the victor was.
The word vaccine is rooted in the Latin vacca, which means cow. This social group of animals is a perfect representation of collective animal behavior. The call for the human populace to all be vaccinated and reach herd immunity is tied into this groupthink paradigm. To be in the collective is to be a cow in the herd, a cow herd. Thus, vaccinations can truly spell out for us the herding of the nations. Done on a global scale, this is something that is of biblical proportions. The problem with this is inherent in its very presentation. There are, never have been, or ever will be silver bullet solutions to anything in life. To present a vaccine, a product of pharmaceutical corporations, as the be-all, end-all solution to a problem of virology with the eventual condition that one needs to inject said product into their bodies to continue their presence in public society is by its very notion and definition complete authoritarianism. Individual health has never been a collective ruling, and the moment it is made into one, Every natural freedom is completely lost, since all freedom stems from health and all of its individual multidimensional qualities, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. If everyone is told what to put into their bodies, the oppressors will not stop there. Everyone will be told what to think, what to feel, and what to believe. All of these will be formed into laws, with the non-compliant being eradicated. Some of these statues are already in place as anyone can see. Perhaps the histories and implications of such things as the Inquisition or the assimilation of the First Nations into residential schools has not really been comprehended. The idea that an individual can indirectly protect another by taking a product is a philosophical farce. Person A does not lose their headache because person B took the aspirin. Likewise, the concept that there are any one-size-fits-all solutions in medicine is also overwhelmingly absurd, which completely and utterly fails to take into account that every patient is different and requires a unique diagnosis to treat for any condition, current or potentially ensuing. The current measures of oppression along with any silver bullet vaccine solution have nothing to do with medicine and nothing to do with health. The governments and pharmaceutical corporations of the world would have us believe that our natural immune system is not a quality defense system given to us by God or nature, but is instead to be viewed as a vaccine storage facility that is always deficient in vaccine supply. As the World Health Organization states, vaccines are heroes. It must also be asked why the governments and media are always so interested in insulting anyone who questions their so-called official narrative. Have we not always been taught that those who are intent on insulting others are considered bullies, intimidators, and tyrants? Instead, the proper approach is to continuously do any questioning with sincerity, poise, and intellectual clarity, not anger and hostility. The establishment loves to point out anger-driven responses as proof that the questioner is an unintelligent conspiracy quack, incapable of controlling even their own emotional state, especially when anger-driven reactions also lead to physical violence. High levels of intelligence, especially when from the heart, is the way to drive the darkness out. Violent protests never do anything, ever. Protests and anger are ammunition for the establishment to use against anyone that is able to see past their veil of psychological gatekeeping. Ask again, why is there always such an interest in establishment thinkers to be intimidating and overtly insulting? Even if a conspiracy theory is just a nonsensical belief as it is constantly said, is an individual not supposed to have freedom of religion? Would this freedom of religion not include any and all types of belief as to what reality is? Perhaps belief truly is a threat and danger to those in positions of power. The other isolative measures demanded upon the populace have been symbolic in their own right. While everyone was told that we are all in this together, the same forces imposing these measures said to stay six feet apart. Six feet under, six feet apart. Everyone is therefore symbolically dead to each other.
The masks have significant relevance as well, with the word mask being from the Latin term persona, which means person, personality, individual. Masks are the grand symbol of conformity, where there are no longer free individuals. Everyone is simply another number in the collective global inventory system. Can anyone stay six feet apart from life? Can anyone wear a mask to be disguised from the fate of their own death? Ironically, the one and only way to permanently save a life from the grips of death is to not give birth to it in the first place, thus relegating the aspect of saving lives by using any measures into something that cannot ever occur. Physical continuity is the only thing that can ever be hoped for, and is the actual sales pitch to destroy freedoms in exchange for some type of perceived isolative protection. The aspect of quarantine carries within itself the symbolically significant number 40, which has been noted in previous works, among those 40 Weeks of Silence, which pointed out the symbolic correlation of the year 2020 with that of the quarantine. When one is dead, they are silent, and inversely, when one is silent, they are considered in the eyes of the authorities to be dead. When one wears a mask, they are silent. When one is in quarantine, they are silent. A maxim of law is that silence is consent, and 40 also symbolizes the birth or movement into a new world or new age, as linked with the 40 weeks of gestation in pregnancy. The only way for a new world to be created is for the old one to be destroyed. This cannot be argued in any capacity. It is a basic principle of all construction. Destruction, then construction. The headline of this symbol has never been called the renovated world order. This type of silence in quarantine is the opposite of that previously mentioned in regards to one's communion with the absolute. It is, in fact, the silence rendered through a negation of communion by way of the insistence to exist in a profane secular system. Freedom is never a choice. It is innate. It is an internal compass that guides one through storms of persecution, hardship, and cruelty. A free spirit does not have to be convinced that they are free. They do not need a government or a corporation to tell them that they are free. Either one is free or they are not. It is as simple as that. Denying the system and being in the 1% does not automatically mean acceptance in the communion. It is a chance at a chance. Denial of a vaccine in and of itself does not automatically mean that one has worked on themselves to any degree whatsoever. That individual may still have all kinds of hate and dualistic tendencies within themselves, ready to take advantage of others for personal gain, filled with ideals of usury and tactics of manipulation. To simply be anti-establishment does not automatically make one qualitatively equipped to listen to the eternal and walk the narrow path. Remember, all of this is a chance at a chance. There is no love or empathy from anyone who wishes to inflict a false choice upon the populace that ushers those who are non-compliant out of society. It has been said that to not fall in line with freedom-destroying measures is selfish. But there is in fact nothing more selfish than the infliction of physical mandates put upon any individual. Where is the love in pushing individuals into the cold because they do not want to inject a pharmaceutical product into their own physical presence? What form of medical practice is that? The legitimate spirit of medicine and health denounces such measures. They are the antithesis of health. They are the antithesis of medicine. Any doctor or individual that announces their belief in the legitimacy of such practices is simultaneously announcing their belief in a system of Satanism and the black arts. It is no fiction that our fellow men do not want anyone to deviate from the path that is already lined up for us. Why is that? Why is it so important to just fall in line? Really sit with that question, because its implications are quite astounding. So, what are the options in this world to come? The first option is to simply get the vaccine. Align your actions with the tyrannical establishment while going along with the 99% and see where that takes you. If one feels that it means nothing to do this and that life is just going to go back to normal, then go headlong into it. That is the path that is already lined up for anyone to take.
Many who claim that they are religious and believe in their Savior will choose this option, because they also believe their faith indemnifies themselves from such a choice. This, of course, is a false and very presumptuous belief to have. Many others are not even thinking about its implications at all. They will get the vaccine and believe life will just continue on in fashion. For the majority of humans, becoming a part of the global inventory system is not a thought that needs to be considered even for a moment. Another option is to rage against the measures with furor and tempest. Actions of violence and a tendency to inflict as much destruction as one can do alone or in groups is what this path calls for. There is no grace in this choice, and it is truly a fool's errand. The bigger picture is still not being seen. It is not only the governments and rulers inflicting all of these measures. It is the 99% falling in line, and even quite often, demanding that it occur. Another option, which it has become increasingly obvious that many more are considering, is to take one's own life. This is defeatist in the ultimate sense, and gives in to personal despair. The higher principle of what one truly is cannot be understood by any who take this course of action. As with every bodily death, the individual does not die. Only the vehicle which the individual finds themselves in during this particular life experience. Despair caters to weakness, and weakness caters to this totalitarian system. Never take this option. There is always a better way. What else is there to do? Does one run away into the woods by themselves or with others and try to eke out an existence? Is this the method? What does this method mean and can something like this even be sustainable? So what is the solution? What can the 1% or even 0.1% actually do? It's a big question which will require a tremendous amount of effort to resolve. With enough energy and intention, it can be done. Remember, enlightenment is never found in the madness of the crowd. When enough pressure is put on any system, including the individual, that pressure can either be released or something else can happen with it. The pressure reaches its apex, which can then be turned inward, and it becomes atomic. The great paradox is resolved, where the indivisible becomes divisible into everything. God is in man, and man is in God. A thought at this point to be pondered is, what does evolution actually look like? Would it not be the most difficult process imaginable? If we are moving towards God, does God act like one of the crowd, or is God the ultimate example of walking in solitude? To stand alone is to not be with God, but to evolve further towards doing as God does. To be good is not a choice. Just like freedom, it is either inherent or it is not. Definitions, examples, or demonstrations are not needed to know and recognize this quality. So, to participate or not participate in an evil system is no choice at all. It still remains choiceless because to participate does not align with anything inside of oneself, but to know this is to be tested. The test of personal evolution is not designed to be some easy task where evil is not involved. How could it be? Would spiritual evolution just be some utopia where the boundaries are never pushed and nothing is ever known? One receives a check mark or is crossed out because of what is intrinsic to them. What is there to rage about against this? Societal pressure and influence are often incorrect guides. And these are often more of life's tests in our individual journeys to see what these experiences can pull out of us. Do we blame pressure and influence for making all of our decisions? Or is evolution perhaps about testing whether or not one can rise above these boundaries? The boundaries and pressures that weigh down one's heart because it is not in alignment with that basic principle which one knows to be correct. To truly know this is to understand that in freedom, everyone's path will be different. It is for this reason that no one can tell anyone in a concrete way what to do with their lives or what choices they should make, not on either side of the fence. To do this would be to create another organizational authority which would in time eventually lead to the same oppressive construct that we see before us today. That is not freedom. Freedom is never being told what to do, good or bad. 
This is often very difficult to comprehend, since the line between freedom and enslavement is paper thin. The individual that is truly free does not require permission to create a better world. The individual that is truly free recognizes when there is a constant and consistent pattern of fear and tactics of mental manipulation used by governments, self-appointed authorities, and even their fellow man. The truly free individual also recognizes that there is no changing this pattern, just as it would be impossible to pull darkness from the night. Energy and intention is instead focused upon creating a better world away from the manipulators and those who lust for death and war. A better world is created by the free individual, and there may happen to be other free individuals whose actions align with the principles of freedom. When pushed against the wall and left with no choice, these free individuals may send back everything that was ever tied to the governmental authorities, such as licenses, birth certificates, tax records, etc. As it was once said, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When the last doors of the public are closed upon the free individual, there will be no reason to hold on to that which is Caesar's. They are asking for it all back because it is theirs, and it is given back. The free individual is not silently compliant. The free individual is free to create a better world with others that are free. The free individual is free to return to the source of everything. The free individual is free.